there and welcome. We're continuing our series uh, on moles and today we're looking at the mole and gas volumes. Now, the mole and gas volumes, the relationship that was formally established by a scientist called Amadeo Avogadro and he made this proposal in 1811. Today we know it as Avogadro's law. Now Avogadro proposed that equal volumes of gases measured at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of particles. Now, if I was to express that mathematically, what he's saying is that the volume of a gas right, is proportional to number of particles or number of molecules. Now, we know that number of molecules is proportional to moles. Right? So therefore means that volume of a gas is proportional to number of moles. So it means that one mole of a gas should have a fixed volume under given conditions of temperature and pressure. And that we call molar volume. So as predicted by Avogadro's law, one mole of a gas should occupy a fixed volume under certain conditions of temperature and pressure. Now, today we use two conditions. We have what we call room temperature and pressure and standard temperature and pressure. So that one mole of a gas occupies 24 decimeter cube at room temperature and pressure, which is 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. Or 22.4 decimeter cube at standard temperature and pressure or zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. Now let's apply Avogadro's law in the calculations involving gas volumes and the mole. So here's a question. The question says what is the volume occupied by 1.5 moles of hydrogen gas at RTP? And remember our usual strategy. The strategy is to work out what relationship the question is asking us about. This relationship is they're asking us about the volume, it's a gas, and they have given us some information, 1.5 moles. So it's the relationship between moles and gas volumes. And that relationship, we know, is given by molar volume. So we know that right away that we're going to write one mole of Hydrogen gas will occupy a certain volume. This volume is at RTP, so that's 24 deciliter cubed at RTP. So then the question is asking you what volume, so we don't know the volume, but we're told that we have 1.5 mole of hydrogen. Straightforward. So we cross multiply there and we a variable x in place of the question sign and then x is going to be equal to 1.5 times 24 and that is 36 decimeter cubed and so there you go easy peasy that's your answer let's try another question in this question it asks how many moles of co2 are present in 11,200 centimeter cube of the gas at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. Once again, we look at the relationship. You're asked about moles of CO2 and you're given a volume and the conditions are zero degrees Celsius, one atmosphere. So moles and volume at zero degrees Celsius with an atmosphere. So we must, that's this, these conditions are speaking to standard temperature and pressure. And we know that one mole of the gas, in this case, it's CO2, will occupy 22.4 decimeter cubed, okay, at 
STP. Now, question says 11,200 centimeter cube. That's a volume. This is decimeter cube. So you have two options. You can convert 11,200 centimeter cube to decimeter cube, or you can convert 22.4 decimeter cube to centimeter cube. But you must work in one unit for the volume. So I'm going to convert 11,200 centimeter cube to decimeter cube. Now, since 1,000 1,000 centimeter cubed equal one decimeter cubed, and you must know your volume conversions. Then 11,200 centimeter cubed will be 11.2 decimeter cubed at STP. And we want to find out how many moles of CO2 are in that volume. So we cross multiply again, and we make x the subject, and then x is going to be equal to 11.2 over 22.4 and that is going to be equal to 0.5 mole and that's your answer now if we examine closely again we can derive a formula because this is the volume that you are given and that is molar volume. And this is the number of moles. So from that, we can see that number of moles equal given volume over molar volume and that's your derived formula remember we don't believe in spotting the formula but if we can derive it even better we're about the relationships and if we know the relationships then we can work out the formula that's all for now i'm ken cracker see you next time don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel.